Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Roger, Twain. Tranquility. We copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Hello, and uh, welcome to another enthusiastic uh, Steve video. Today, we're going to be looking at the CRT Superstar 9900. Hi, and uh, welcome to another enthusiastic Steve video. As you can see, um, new haircut, bit short, but it's uh, post the lockdown. So, um, what are we looking at today? Well, the last few videos I've done has uh, created quite a bit of interest in the CB radio I was using, or one of the radios, the Superstar uh, or CRT Superstar 9900. Now, this radio I use uh, mobile. I have used it in my radio shack as well. And it's, it's actually created a lot of interest. Lots of questions and lots of comments were asked about this radio. And one person in particular asked me if could I do a review on one. So here we go, a CRT Superstar 9900, the quick review. The CRT SS9900, the version I use is the version 3. Now version 3s are still available if you hunt them down on the internet, but uh, you're more likely to buy a version 4, the slightly upgraded version to the version 3. There are a few slight changes. Um, these radios predominantly are sold as a 10 meter band radio. Like with a lot of export radios, they can be extended. Now, fortunately with this one, you do not need a computer to extend it. Um, if you look on the internet, there are many videos that show you the key sequence, how to turn it on, and then it will convert it into a, a wide banded um, radio, give it a larger frequency coverage. Now, the standard radio covers 28 and 29 megahertz. Absolutely fantastic for the uh, um, amateur radio person who's using 10 meters, sideband and FM, and, and also AM available as well. Um, lovely little radio, good audio. But if you once it's been extended, the version three, which I have in front of me, uh, tends to go from about around 25.6 megahertz no gaps up to 30 megs. Now there is a VFO, so you can tune this thing in very small increments all the way between those frequencies. The new version four has a little bit more of an advantage. There may be a little bit more traction to the amateur radio person because it covers down to 24 megahertz, uh, part of the uh, 12 meter band. So it goes from 12 meters, I think it's around about 24.8 megs. The top end of 24 megs goes all the way up to 30. So you've got a little bit more frequency range with the version 4. Now, from a power perspective, the quoted figures are... Now, on the version 3, they are 50... Well, I will show you in a minute, actually, with the power meter. But the version 3 is uh, slightly down on AM. Um, they actually quoted around about 15 to 20 watts and uh, maybe a little bit more on, on the peak on AM. FM is should be around about 50, and on sideband you should get around about 60 watts. Now, quite good figures straight out of the, out of the box. Um, this, these power settings are fully adjustable by a control knob on the front. Uh, the version 4, the AM is up to 30 uh, from around 15. FM is still being quoted at 50, and sideband is always is also at 60 watts. Now, a word of caution here. Now, reading on other forums and from user feedback, uh, these radios, like many modern radios, do tend to get a little bit hot. Um, it's not recommended. They're, they are designed to be, but they're not recommended to be run at full power for any long length or any duration. Now, some people have experienced uh, front uh, finals uh, failures on these radios. Um, and but that's only when they've had them on at full power and they've been using them for a very long time. Personally, it's like a racing car, Ferrari. I say a Ferrari or Porsche it can do 180 mile an hour. If you're on the autobahn, you wouldn't drive at 180 mile an hour all day, every day. The engine would soon wear out or break. Same as the radios. I turn you know if if you're licensed or you're allowed to actually permitted in your area to run at higher power, yeah, you know, these radios run turn them back, turn them back 70 or 80 percent. Uh, to 70 or 80 percent and they run a little bit cooler and uh, they will prolong the life of the radio and uh, not not actually break 
Uh, this one I've actually, if you can probably see just vaguely on here, I've actually put little bits of tape markers. And these are power settings from 40, 30, 20, and on the side, 10 watts. So when I switch over to amateur mode, switch it back to 10 watts, uh, I can go on 10 meters, use sideband, absolutely happy. Um, if, if conditions allow uh, anywhere else than the bands, uh, you have got the other settings there if you need them. Um, if you're running a transver into a transverter or anything like that, you can turn the power right down to just a, a couple of watts. Uh, it's very useful. Right, we've zoomed in a little bit closer. Now, what I will say about this radio is fairly compact uh, compared to uh, 7900. You may have seen the CRT 7900. That's got like the orangey coloured screen. As you can see, the CRT 7900 has a large display and much larger buttons than compared to the CRT 9900. Now, being slightly more compact, uh, the controls are a little bit smaller. You can put my big thumpy fingers look, to the controls. You can see actually how tiny they, they really are. But they're, they're no problem. I can turn them quite easily. Uh, top left, we've got uh, power and um, the RF gain control. We've got the clarifier and the squelch, which has got automatic squelch and different levels of squelch. And you've got the on-off and volume control. Across the bottom, we've got the uh, menu, which you can go into an extensive menu for different controls. Scan, so you can scan the channels in that in that band. Uh, dual watch, if you want to set up to watch on two to a couple of channels. Uh, emergency button. Frequency, we can change from the display from the actual channel for that band to the frequency. Uh, we've got the band itself. We've got letters in the uh, top there. And we've got A, B, C, D, goes right through. D, F, G, H, I, J, uh, J, and back to A again. That's the UK FM channels. Uh, different modes for FM, AM, sideband, etc. And we've got the memories. So you can program in memories and then can recall those as you wish. So that's basically it. You know, just to the right of that, you've got the actual tune and knob, uh, which was also a push button selector as well for some of the op options in the menus. But that's the radio. Um, very simple indeed to use. Now the microphone that comes with it is a CRT M9. Now this basic microphone, I say basic, it's actually a very good microphone. Um, now a lot of people upgrade to power mics on other radios. Normally like something like the Capo uh, makes it as a very good, and others, but the Capo is a very good power microphone. Fits well with the 7900. I use it on the 3900, works a treat. Now, the feedback you get from users is don't bother replacing this microphone, just use this one. And the audio is cracking. You've got mic gain in built into the radio. You can turn that up, turn that down. I run mine fairly high, as do most users. I think it goes up to 33, 34. And most people run them around the 28 to 31 mark, um, depending on, the, on your level of your voice. But um, that gives good results. Uh, some people have gone on to the power microphone. They then turn back the RF gain to uh, to compensate for the actual, uh, so you don't overmodulate, um, and it doesn't sound as good. Uh, so this CRT M9 microphone that comes with it, um, it works a treat. So up to your own individual choice, of course, what you think, but it works very well indeed. Right, we move round to the rear of the radio, and as you can see, it's got a very substantial heatsink. And it does need it if you run it on uh, or approaching the high power end of the radio. It does need that heatsink. I've actually fitted a right angled antenna connector only because it suits where I, I actually place the radio. And when it's on the dashboard of my car, it's easier to connect an antenna straight in this way than it is straight out the back. You also note on there as well, there is a small socket uh, there. That's the external speaker if you want to fit one. And the port next to it is a data port. Yeah, you can connect this to a computer with software to help you program it. But to be honest, you can program everything from the front panel of the radio with fair ease. So you may prefer to do it from a computer, but I've programmed in some memories and everything, and it's so easy to do. You can just do it actually from the front. Read the manual, or there are many, many tutorials online already. So I won't go through how it's done, because they're out there already, and you can see, uh, just watch those for advice. So the next thing is we're going to uh, have a quick 
look at the the actual actual power this radio puts out. I've connected it to a dummy load via uh, going through my little power meter here. So we'll look at FM, AM, and sideband, and just to see actually what the version three is actually putting out. So here we go then. The radio is connected to the power supply, uh, going into a dummy load. The I'm using channel 11 of the UK uh, FM legal channels. Uh, the power is actually turned up at the moment all the way. So let's just see what this radio is actually capable capable of. One, a two, a three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Right, uh, FM, full power. Results, 50 watts. Uh, that's pretty good. Um, very similar. Well, it's the same quoted as the version 4. Right, we've uh, now switched to AM mode. And we'll do the same test. One, two, three, four, five. 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 Yeah, that was interesting. It was about 20 and 25 watts on the swing. Uh, the version 4 apparently puts out about 30 can you tweak 30 watts out of this one by you know, maybe speak it up a bit more? Um, I don't know. But... And now we've switched to uh, sideband mode. So we'll, we'll give this a go. A one, a two, a three, four, five. One, a two, a three, four, five. Okay, well, that's the SW Army is not a uh, peak meter, so it's kind of an average reading. But we're getting anywhere between 40 upwards to 50 and then peaking around about 60 watts. So uh, very good indeed on sideband. Uh, this radio is actually f full of functions. Um, it's got, uh, let's say, a digital SW Army meter, which you saw working there very well with the dummy load. And it's fairly accurate. You know, when I've used it on an antenna and compared it to an SW Army meter, it's fairly accurate, so it's it's very a useful tool. It's got a voltage display. As I say it's got a dual watch scan mode. Got a Roger Beat built in. That's if you like that type of thing. Normal public address system. Uh, you've got multicolor display. There's seven different colors on there, and you can actually see it in sunlight as well. Some of the displays. So some are a little bit not not that bright, but not too bad. It's got cutoffs, noise blankers. You've got an echo. Uh, echo control built into the menu. The echo is not adjustable on the outside of the radio. I believe you can adjust the amount of echo if you go inside the radio. Uh, it, of course, that will avoid any warranties, etc. But uh, just to say, echo is either on or off. You've got a plus 10 kilohertz switch. Uh, in Roger Beep, you can turn on and off and adjust the, I think you can adjust the microphone for um, the actual volume. Microphone gain as well. You've got a monitor, you can monitor your talkback of your own microphone volume and, and uh, gain, so that's pretty useful. You've got a timeout timer, probably useful for me if I talk too much. And there's a, the, one of the best ones on there is the high SWR protection. It not only does it give you a readout of your SWR, but if it goes too high, it will give you an audible warning and stop TX, so to stop you from actually doing any harm to the radio. Also, high voltage protection. So if for any reason your power supply or battery supply, whatever you're using is too high, it will protect the radio. So all in all, I like this radio. It's got many, many functions. And it's compared to some CB availables, uh, radios that are available and some of the radios that have gone before, this radio is truly out of this world. Now I'll put this radio on air, but at the moment, unfortunately, it's, it's dead quiet. Now, we normally have quite a bit of activity around here on UK FM, but it's about tea time, so most of the guys are having their lunch. There's been a few guys out Hilltop this afternoon, but I think they've disappeared as well. Uh, the local, uh, the old mids on Channel 30 is normally very active, and also been up on Triple Five, but Triple Five is very quiet indeed. Now, I've got the sideband on at the moment, upper sideband and the squelch open, a little bit of white noise, but the audio quality on this radio is very good. 
Uh, very good co as to compared to the 7900, which is a bigger radio physically. And you would expect the radio to have a better sound quality possibly. But you know, they must be using a better quality speaker in this 9900. So that's one of the big plus points is the actual audio. I'll give a quick call out and just to see if there's anybody out there today. This is Charlie Tango 2064, Charlie Tango 2064, calling out on uh, channel 30, that's 27305. Anybody out there listening this afternoon? This is Steve, Charlie Tango 2064. Now, it brings up the SWR nicely when you transmit. It's 1 to 1.5 at the moment, which is reasonably low. I can put that through a little... Uh, a matcher unit I've got here and bring it right down to one to one but I haven't got that in line at the moment this is going into a game master which is actually hidden away in a tree um, it's a little bit covert that is but the tree does raise the SWR just a, just a tad if it was out in the open that would be down to one to 1.1 1 .1. unfortunately the band is quiet so uh, we'll try somewhere else well, we've moved up to triple five to see what's going on. A little bit of electrical interference is picking up there somewhere. Something somebody must be cutting their lawns or uh, uh, electrical device somewhere. I've got a little bit of high background noise there, but not normally that that bad on a on an afternoon. CQ CQ. This is Charlie Tango two zero six four. Charlie Tango two zero six four. Calling and standing by. And again, there's nobody out and about this afternoon and skip conditions are pretty poor. One final attempt now. We've uh, moved to the local area, um, Channel 38. Uh, normally fairly active, but again, like you say, it's, it's tea time here on Saturday afternoon as I film this. Um, and there may not be anybody about. So we, we'll give it a go. Channel 38, Channel 38. Good afternoon. This is Steve on the northeast side of Fairham. Giving a quick call out, testing out a 9900 radio on channel 38. Standing by. Can't hear you, Steve. <laughs> Can't hear me at all? No, not at all, mate. Terrible, wasn't it? It's awful. <laughs> That's terrible, wasn't it? You couldn't hear me to call you back, then you called me back. There you go. Brilliant. Um, how, how are you keeping this afternoon? I'm just, um, if you don't mind, I'm just filming a little bit on the old 9,900. Somebody asked, somebody asked me to uh, ex describe the 9,900 to them. So I've just done a, just doing a very short video, um, just showing them how it works. But the band is, all the bands are dead at the moment. Back to you. Yeah, uh, I just happened to come out. I just had me dinner. Uh, coming in a Walsh uh, Radio Five. Uh, uh, and a seven, mate. So it's five and seven. Fantastic for that. Thank you very much indeed. So Walls Ash is probably about six or seven miles away, isn't it? Yeah, you're about a seven or an actual eight here, and your lovely clear, crisp, crisp audio. So no problems whatsoever. Yeah, thanks for coming back. I've probably disturbed your Saturday afternoon tea. Oh, I just sat down there because um, I've got something new here. Just sat down HF radio and I've just gone on to YouTube because I know there was some stuff about it so um, I was just looking that up when you called right? Okay, Roger. That yeah, YouTube is, is is brilliant for things like that, isn't it? There's there's information. Somebody's done a video on most things out there, and to be honest, that's how I look a lot of my information up to uh, find out about something new. Anyway, I wish you luck with that, and uh, I'll let you I'll let you get on and say thanks very much indeed for coming back to me. Okay, Steve. Catch you again later, man. Yeah. Cheers. Seventy threes. Take care. So, let's just turn that down for a minute. I've got a nice guy there come back he's uh, in walls ash which is about six or seven miles to the west of my location um very clear audio as you can tell um what can i say the, the radio works for me it works extremely well it's it's very good here and as a home base radio and it's small enough and portable enough to take out in the car and give it a go there so as i say it's a big uh, get me finger thumb in. It's a thumbs up for Mr. Enthusiastic Steve. I do like this radio. I would recommend it, but again, it's all down to personal preference and what you're after. Price has gone up a little bit in the last year. I think this radio was probably around about 160 pounds last year, 170. Um, 
in, in some locations. It's gone up to now, I believe, to just over 200 as I speak in 2021. So, uh, yeah, if look, there are probably you know, bargains out there. Um, version 3s are probably discounted. And to be honest, there's not a lot of difference between the version 3 and the version 4. So pay your money, take your choices. This has been Enthusiastic Steve saying, send me threes and take care. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for man.